Hello, I'm King Link and I'm back for my first day of E3. Now, E3 has been crazy. I actually dived in headfirst and got to see quite a few things on day one, as well as setting up a few things for the next few days. But the good news is that my day was packed. Just to give you an idea of how I'm going to view these games, I won't be trying to be harsh on these games. Almost everything here is very early, alpha, pre-alpha, and more. So I'll try to talk more about some complaints, but really this is a hype event and let's give the companies at least a little bit of the benefit of the doubt. Now there's a ton here, so I'm just going to jump in and talk about the games in the order that I saw them. Let's begin with the game that I rushed over to so I could see it first. Doom Eternal. So yes, I like almost everyone else am a big fan of Doom 2016. And I'll be honest, the Doom trailer at Bethesda's E3 press conference left me a little worried. It felt sporadic, spastic, and just overall like it was going to be confusing or animation heavy. You know, very animation heavy from what I was seeing. But still, I wanted to see how it would feel. The fact is, I think Doom's alive and well in this game, though dear god, I don't think they could have added more mechanics. Doom in 2016 was extremely arcadey, but now it's grown somehow. Uh, for instance, you can destroy a Mancubus's cannons, the Arcanotron, if I'm saying that right, uh, its cannon can be destroyed, and when you do, this enemy changes its attack patterns. And dear god, the glory kills are the most violent things I've seen. This is reaching, you know, Mortal Kombat 11's level of violence, probably a little less visceral, but this game is like a 9.8 out of 10. It's intense. The controls are complex as well, though there's a new climbing mechanic that I'm not completely sold on, as well as a way to do that mid-air parkour bouncing off pipes uh, on the wall. There's a ton of additional functions though. You can as always use melee for glory kills and that's fine, but now there's a super move apparently on top of the glory kills. That's what I saw, I don't know where that gauge is, but it's definitely in the game. Uh, there's a flamethrower if you want more ammo to uh, by lighting guys on fire. There's chainsaws for ammo. It's honestly, it's just controls overload. But I think over time the game will feel better. It's just the first look. Now there's even a one-up in the game that just revives the marine when he dies. That's, I mean honestly it's insane the amount of content there is in just one game and this one upgrade. I really like it. Uh, the storytelling is so good too. At the beginning of the demo, the Doom Marines marching into a bunker, and everyone who sees him just reacts in awe or fear. Uh, they back out of his way, and he just grabs the uh, key card on someone's lanyard, dragging him to a scanner. It's really a sweet scene. So that's Doom. Uh, next up, we have Monster Hunter World Iceborne. I don't believe I have a video for this. Capcom didn't give me a press kit. Uh, I've actually had a few discussions with them. So this game really does look great though, uh, but it's also, I'll be honest, it's a little cute. I haven't played the first one in the series yet, but this one looks just as good, though the visuals feel like they've taken another step up. The snow really looks incredible, you can actually see your own footprints and all as you're moving around the area. Now I played in a party of four and we had to take down a strange beast, but the fight was incredible. I actually used a sword and shield befitting the name King Link, and my party and I took down the enemy. We even cut off the enemy's tail at one point and I was able to loot it before continuing with the main battle. Even when the character slides down a hill in the snow, I was having a blast. I love the look and feel. And it all feels new, of course. My personal favorite thing is that the helper character, uh, I think it's called the Felin, if I'm even saying that close to correct, uh, he actually had a snowboard. You know, was the stats for it good? Did it help? Did I even do it right? Who cares? It's a cat with a snowboard on his back. And all in all, this does feel like a nice way to deliver even more Monster Hunter World. And I enjoyed my time with the party, taking down that enemy. And as soon as I get a new computer up, I think I'm going to have to try out the first game in the series. Or maybe this, if it's out by then. Dragon Quest Builder 2. So if you haven't played the original Dragon Quest Builders... It's kind of like Minecraft met Dragon Quest. You have a Dragon Quest story, but instead of focusing on fighting and adventuring, your character is known as a builder, and you build objects and expand the world. If you have played Dragon Quest Builder, well, you're going to be right at home here. To be honest, we're seeing almost the same game here from what I've seen. It is a sequel after all, though I'll be honest, I played for a bit, and a number of times the game made me wait till an NPC did something simple. 
I ended up taking off uh, after a bit of that. You know, it's not a horrible experience for a game. The first game was really fun, and the game's world is more interesting, I think, this time. Uh, my character was actually partied up with someone, and the combat is really fun and exciting. Even the townsfolk seem to work with the player, but overall, this just didn't feel good. It didn't translate well to a 15-minute demo, in my opinion, especially the slower moments. But it does remain Minecraft meets Dragon Quest, which is why I picked up the first one, and probably the same reason I'll probably grab this one too. Honestly, the first game is one I keep asking, why isn't this on Steam? But what do I know? I'm just a simple game reviewer. Judgment. So, oh my god, I am such a Yakuza fanboy, and I keep calling this game Yakuza Judgment. I don't think I'm alone on this, but I still do. This is a new game, though, from the studio... Oh boy. <laughs> Ryu Go Gotak, uh, which I'm sure I'm saying wrong. It's the same studio who does Yakuza, and it's set in the same town as Yakuza, and apparently some Yakuza clan do appear, according to the team, but it's just called Judgment. I actually snuck in and played this game twice. This first time I played a bizarre board game, and I instantly saw the roots of the studio. You have this ultra-stylized VR world, where you roll dice and have to lock, pick, save, crack, and more, depending on where you land. It's all based on camera rotro, of course. It's bizarre, but that's what the game is about. Though, I'm not completely sold on the mechanics of the game, I, it still shows the studio hasn't forgot how to stop being serious for a moment. Then I came back and I played the second time. Checking out the story, and god, it's so good. You have a main character who's working with another detective, tracking a third detective, oddly enough. He winds up in a random fight at the beginning, which works well and it feels the same as Yakuza. He dukes it out, uh, and the story feels good. It's like an old detective serial. But sadly, I didn't get a ton of time to play or see much. The look is great, though. The gameplay does feel like, like Yakuza, and this is a really good one. It's coming out in two weeks on PS4. I, of course, want to see it on uh, PC eventually. Morio and Sonic at the Olympic Games, Tokyo 2020. Now, this is Morio and Sonic at the Olympic Games. I wasn't sure about this one. I actually played this game because it took up most of the space of Sega's booth and taking up so much space I was wondering about it. But after playing it, on the big screen, I might add, I get it. It's like Wii Sports, but with Sonic and Morio instead of Miis. That's how I see it. And they have five games uh, for the demo this time. I only played karate, skateboarding, hurdles, and archery, so I played a lot. But there was also surfing available, and there's a huge list of games in addition that weren't available at this time. Now, karate is great. Uh, it's a rock, paper, scissors idea with punches, kicks, blocking, and grapples, but really solid, and it abides by the Olympic rules focused on scoring, as well as, you know, kicking people out of the arena. The guy showing it to me says that you'll have proper tournaments, uh, similar to the Olympics, rather than the one-shots that they had in the demo mode. Skateboarding, I'll admit, I wanted to love it, and it's funny to see Bowser grinding a half pipe. That's one of the funniest things I've seen all day, but I don't fully get it. I just want another Tony Hawk. That's not this, but it is a fun little game. Hurdles was crazy. I chose Sonic for it because of course I did. You actually have to punch to jump and shake the controller to run. You know, I'm glad that no one was videotaping me. It could have easily been taken out of context. Finally, archery was solid. You know, I love archery because the wind and other variables make archery games interesting, and it was the same here. According to the guy leading the demo, you can actually use two controllers and have to pull back the bow, but it was extremely fun. Now, this feels a little above Wii Sports, but probably is more aimed towards that idea than a deep game. But it certainly uh, would work great as a party game, in my opinion. Darksiders Genesis. You know, th this one is strange. Uh, I don't think I have footage. I reached out to the company, but they haven't gotten back to me in time. Uh, so I'll try to just describe it. It's kind of like Diablo in the Darksiders world, but with fewer enemies and more focused on guns. It's an interesting idea. The level design is really good, and I really like the Darksiders series, but this is not a main series Darksiders game as I know it. This is something different, and I wonder if fans are going to be ready for this. That being said, honestly, this wasn't my favorite game. I enjoyed my time with the demo, but this is another demo I cut short. And while the level design was outstanding, and there's a number of interesting little areas, I'll be honest, I'm not really sure I like this one. 
the player kept going behind the camera area uh, where the camera was blocked by some piece of the background and to places where the player can't be seen. Overall, I think this is going to need a little more time in the oven. I do see it as a 2019 release date on it, and to me, from what I saw, that's too soon for some of the issues. I don't want to see Darksiders have issues as a franchise because I'm a fan and it's an interesting concept, but honestly, Genesis didn't excite me that much. Zombie Army 4, Dead War. It's Left for Dead 3. Okay, I guess not, but it certainly felt that way. We have four characters in co-op playing and fighting their way through hundreds of Nazi zombies. Okay, Nazi zombies are different. And in the demo I played, it started off with a really interesting siege where a train smashes into a hideout we were in and waves after waves came out after us. Then the zombies were beaten back over time, even using a chain gun, bombs, mines, and then the players explored a train yard, and before long it was time to go, unfortunately. But even though I'm not a huge zombie fan, I found this to be really interesting. I'm not a huge fan of co-op games, but this one was quite fun. Uh, a big focus in this game is on traps that are already parts of the level. There might be an electrified floor or an awesome airplane propeller that actually sucked up all the enemies in an area. It's a strange, weird trap, but if there's a ton of these unique traps, that makes it all the better. And also, if your character officially dies, he actually rises as a zombie, so your friends have to kill your player character as a zombie. That's a really cool little feature. I mean, it's not playable, but it's really a cool, interesting thought. Now this is clearly still based off Sniper Elite, and you still have Sniper Elite's guns here, but it works. There were slow motion kill which was interesting, but both players in our two person group saw the kill on their screen, and I think that was a little bit strange. Also during the train siege, there felt like there was tons of friendlies fighting alongside us, and that's a great feeling for a major siege. I do want to keep an eye on this one. A question will be how hard it is to find a party or is it drop in and drop out, but I also found it really enjoyable. Sniper Elite VR For a final game of the first day, we have one of the most visceral. Yes, I said that about Doom, but I'm saying it again because Sniper Elite VR was amazing. This is an all new campaign based around Sniper Elite Universe in Italy, with only Nazis again. You're playing yourself rather than Carl, and honestly, it's crazy good. There's so many little things I could talk about. You're able to move forward, and when you press forward, you move in the direction your body is facing, not some forward vector of your original body. You can just keep turning in a circle rather than using the joystick uh, to strafe, and you can peek around corners and use the PSVR and the aim controller. You feel like you're holding a real weapon in your hands at all times, and honestly, I spent about 30 seconds just staring at my gun and spinning it around to see all the angles of it. You know, VR is always going to feel like a gimmick to the uninitiated, and since my last experience was probably a year ago, it definitely does for me, but in this case, it's not a bad gimmick. You have to look through the scope, and you have to lean around corners if you want. This is a game that I played sitting down, probably a good thing, but can be played standing up, and according to the devs, you can actually crouch, and the game changes the hitbox correctly. You know, this is a very early pre-alpha build, according to them, and thanks Rebellion for letting me be one of the first, but I've never played anything like this. Though, I do have to say this, this game may be slightly dangerous for the industry. For how absolutely amazing this game is, this is probably what people think about when they talk about murder simulators. I love the experience. I think this is one of the best VR games I've played, and it really isn't teaching much but giving the player a fun experience, but I have to say that I see moral outrage coming. Still, Sniper Elite is just very rewarding. I actually played it on Sniper Elite difficulty on my second time through, and I don't know if the difficulty was toned down or the ability to pop out and shoot was that much easier in VR, but I beat the game on my second attempt at the difficulty. Though the bullet cam is so much worse in VR. It's not done in the same way, but still, I reacted a few times when I saw the kill. It's just so bloody, uh, and it's right in your face. But ultimately, it's only Nazis. Oh well. Press conferences. Now this is everything I saw on day one, but since we have time, let's go back a couple days and talk quickly about the previous two days in the press conferences. 
They were mostly good in my opinion. There are trailers for games I wanted, and even though not everything was for me, that's kind of the point of these things. I don't want to grade them because that's kind of dumb, but overall they were entertaining and that's what they expe uh, were expected to be. I will call out Bethesda though. If you want to see something awkward, that's the one to watch. If you didn't see it, well, it was awkward for a lot of reasons. Like, they only showed the first row of people clapping, and it seemed like almost no one else was. Uh, maybe they were piping in noise, but it was strange. There was a guy screaming a lot. And the fact is, Fallout 76, well, they went all in trying to recover the goodwill, and it didn't work. It set a very odd tone for the press conference. I mean, their first song was, When I say jump, you say how high. But this is from a studio that just spent three minutes telling us, we listen, and that's the song they chose. Jesus. The other thing I noticed is that everyone's doing a subscription model now. And, ugh, welcome to the Netflix of gaming. I get it, but this is kind of phase three where everyone has their own service now, I think. Uh, Microsoft is spending entirely too much to get people in the door. They're in the honeymoon period, though, that that means you should probably play it. I mean, it's a buck right now. It's a great deal, but I would say watch in like 12 months. It's going to look a lot different, and a lot of different games are going to be in there, probably lesser titles. Uh, Google Stadia subscription, I'm unsure of, and that's probably not going to work. But I do think Stadia will do well with people who don't want to buy new hardware or consoles, but not for the people watching these videos, I bet. We all like to play games locally and think we own games. Um, I can talk more about if we actually own games another time. And Ubisoft at uh, 15 bucks for their service, which sounds like it's mostly their games. You know, there's a ton, though it does link with Stadia, so... Who knows, that actually might work out. Now, I just wanted to say that, overall, I had a great first day of E3. I do have some more things planned. I think I'll be spending much of tomorrow at Nintendo with Pokemon and more, and maybe try to find my way over to Xbox. And then Thursday, well, I have some even bigger games to see then, and we'll talk more about them. I hope you have enjoyed this video, and if you want to see more, of course, consider subscribing. I will be back with even more from the show tomorrow, and of course, until then... I'm King Link, and thank you for watching.